Anytime I upload a video on YouTube, people tend to ask me what font I'm using, what color scheme, what terminal. And so in this video, I'm just gonna quickly show you my favorite fonts and the color scheme I've been using and some of the small tweaks I've done to make NeoVim a bit more clean, in my opinion. So this is my NeoVim configuration. You've probably have seen it before. And you see it's kind of minimal. Uh, I am zoomed in here, so it's not like as fancy as it should be, but it is a bit minimal. A few, thing, uh, few things I've done. So let's start with um, fonts. So my main font that I've been using for a while is this Berkeley Mono. It's paid, and I think it's really, really worth it. I've been enjoying it a lot, and the way I look at it is I get to read these things and, and look at the text all day long, and I'd rather have something that looks nice than just whatever that is out there. So I found this to be really um, easy on the eyes. If you don't want this one, um, there's a lot of other options. So this one used to be my favorite for a long time, which is SF Mono. Uh, all of these can, are actually nerd fonts, so they have support for icons. Nerd font is really good as well. Um, I've used Fira Code for a long time, which is also a very good font in my opinion. Then we have some new ones that are recently popped up like this one, Geist or Geist by um, Vercel, I think. Then we have um, Monospace by GitHub. This one also have multiple like versions. I think um, Neon would be super nice. JetBrain Mono is also really um, good. And then we have, um, and if you want to have more options, there's this website, which you can go here and look at a lot of different nerd fonts. Again, nerd font is just a font that has support to different icons, so you can find a lot of options here. And yeah, use them. For my color scheme, uh, a lot of people think I'm using just uh, Groovebox material, but I have actually stopped using that. Uh, and what I'm using is Capuchin. And I use actually a version that is um, essentially in Capuchin. People have different configurations or different uh, kind of versions of this. So if you go to this config, uh, from community, you see that a lot of people have different um, flavors of this uh, color scheme. If essentially, they just reconfigure it in whatever colors they like. And so for me, I found this one, which is essentially a, the Groovebox version of um, Capuchin. You can go here and see how, what colors they used and things like that. So I've been using this for a long time, and the one you're seeing here is actually that. Before this one, I've used Groovebox material for a long time, which is also really good. Um, but in my opinion, the Capuchin version is a bit um, kind of softer. So that's for the color scheme and for font. And now uh, for other things here, you see that we have this uh, breadcrumb. For that, I'm using this plugin called Barbecue, I think. Yep. And it's almost plug and play. I used this Navic one before, but I found that this one is even simpler. All I care about is just seeing this. Uh, I only use this because sometimes I'm working through like uh, a large code base like Golang or something. And I like to see where I'm at inside the function. So this one, this thing tells me like you're in this function, for example. Now you see my Lua line here. Um, it's also very simple, very minimal. Um, not much happening. I like the square feel of it, not like the angular one. And you see, I don't have any like um, thing here to show me my mode. I just care about the branch. If there's no branch, this won't even show. A full path uh, for the file I'm working on and what servers or like LSP things are running. I'm obviously using LuaLine, which is kind of the standard these days. But with it, I'm using this um, plugin called LuaLine So Fancy, which adds a bunch of components that you can use with LuaLine. So if you see my configuration, this fancy branch is just adding this main here and the color of this box here, the word, will change by, depending on the mode you're in. So if you go to insert mode, screen, file name, and some things related to the LSP and diagnostics. So that's what I'm really using here, nothing much. And that's how I improve my new UI. Now for uh, buffers, you see I don't use any buffer lines and I think it's better this way. I use telescope to switch between buffers. This is basically allowing me to get some more vertical space which is what we really care about, see more code. 
And you see also my Tmux is also super minimal. Um, there's nothing happening there. I usually actually hide it completely and work this way, which gives me even more space. Now, um, the way I kind of treat Tmux, I actually have some um, key maps or something like that, that essentially I can switch between panes with a key map and then one to switch between session. So even if I hide it um, like this, I can still switch between things like that and without having to move the code or distract myself. Just a, a quick thing to see here, what, what I did with Tmux. So essentially, I only have the session name, my name, for example. The background is default, so which essentially going to make it transparent if you make it default. Uh, on the right side, I have nothing, so I keep it as an empty string. I don't want to have anything on the right side. And then, very simple, just the index, the name, and the flag. So that's my Tmux. And the uh, terminal I'm using is called Kitty. I know a lot of people use Alacrity, and I think it's awesome, but uh, in my opinion, Kitty has a better font rendering thingy. So if you open up Alacrity and other terminals, like even um, Westerm, I think Kitty has the most like vibrant colors, hence why I use it. So yeah, uh, I think this is all of it, actually. And if you're wondering what font and color scheme I've been using, hopefully this video will answer your questions.